Call the finance meeting for order for 7 o'clock for the uh, committee of Hamill. I'll now turn the meeting over to our treasurer shortly. <laughs> okay, good evening, guys. Um, just got a couple items that I want to talk to you about. Um, last night, uh, Mayor Morrison, through the Capital Regional Service Commission, he had a virtual meeting with Barbara Quigley. She used to be the clerk for the city of Moncton for many years. She just retired. Anyway, she did um, a course on, what was it called, something, uh, Effective Ways to effective, Have a Meeting. Effective Meetings, basically. Or whatever. She did a, it was the PowerPoint presentation, and she did it for Moncton, I think. Yeah. But man, she did an excellent job in questions. She knows everything about everything. She's just amazing. But it was nice, to the point. Very well done, very impressive. So obviously it would be great for all of us. She could do it virtually for a month and the same idea, have it on her PowerPoint. I think everybody can always walk away and learn something. So. Absolutely. So I contacted Barb um, today and she can do it online for $600 in person for $750 or whatever. I told her that virtually would be fine. Um, she also said that she can do roles and responsibilities for council and staff, which is also very good for, um, especially there are three new councillors, and it's always a good retraining or whatever. So um, she said that she wouldn't be able to do it until early December if we wanted to do it this year, and if not, we can wait until January. I told her right this month we're crazy busy with um, meetings and stuff, but it might be something that we could work out for an evening in December if that's what you want. There is um, money available in this year's budget that we could use for it, so you can either decide tonight or you can think about it and let me know. The other one, um, I don't know if you received an email today from UMNB. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their um, emails are getting hacked or something, so their um, things on their conference is being sent out as spam or whatever. So, but um, she said that this year the minister's keynotes will be moderated, a question and answer between the pre our president and Minister Savoy. And to help us with questions, we're asking you to submit questions no later than November the 22nd. So if you can think of any questions, they should be um, general for all municipalities kind of thing. So and not just specific for our community, but if you want to submit them, I can send them in all together as one okay. email from Hanwell. So I wasn't sure if um, you guys received that, but... I did. So the biggest problem with that is, what if you have questions on something based on what he's saying in his keynote? There's no way to be able to respond. You have to wait till next year to respond? Um, well, that's probably, chances are maybe the president of UMNB would probably question it if he happened to say something, he might come back and But if I think, say, I think if somebody if had a question from the keynote speaker, I think, I think you could ask it then. I mean, I would hope. they usually yeah. call for questions. Well, it sounds like this year or not, that's a thing, right? Mm -hmm. it it, like well, I, and I think that well, I don't think for this it was more like just anything that we might want to add, add to okay. it to make sure that it is answered. Like I don't get the impression he's going to give a big presentation. And then you ask questions. I think his presentation is going to be a question and answer period. Oh, I think that's what I yeah. understood. Yeah, that's what I understood. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, information session built around your Q and A. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's been one of the complaints, as you know, for the last two years with the last minister we had that would come, give it, you know, say something, then the deputy would go and say something, and then they all leave, and you might get one or two questions, and that was it. So. Now this this minister he came to one of our board meetings when we were in Chris Pam's a couple months ago, and that's what, mostly what it was. He was very very good about just taking questions. You know, and at that time he just took them right off the floor. 
Mm. At least this time, you know, they're getting them in writing, so it, which I suppose makes sense because it's a big group and there's only so many things you could ask. And if everybody sends their questions in, you know, they're probably the questions that have the, the most, you know, in common, they'll probably be the ones that will get picked. Because if you think about it with all the municipalities, you're not going to pick everybody's question. No. So, I, I believe, as far as I know, from what I've been told, that's how, how that's the plan. Okay. Yeah. So, if you have any, just get them, yeah. get them in, yeah. to me and I'll send them out all at once. Okay, so let's begin. So, I have provided you a few sheets. The very first one, um, just general budget items. So these are kind of <coughs> some items that when I was going through our budgets, things that we may need. Um, then I had asked uh, our recreation director and our parks manager to provide us with additional <coughs> items. So under... <coughs> General administration, I want to have to budget for a possible laptop for our assistant clerk if they don't want to use a Mac. I really think in the future when we are buying laptops for the counselors that maybe we should possibly just order um, PCs because mm -hmm. we were lucky enough that um, Counselor Cleaver was able to use a Mac and stuff. But otherwise, we've got Macs sitting in there that are just sitting there because we can't use them. So I think that mm -hmm. maybe that's just a suggestion, but maybe we should possibly. <coughs> Is that a possible laptop for a sister if they don't want to use a Mac? Is what you're saying? We have Macs? Yes. Yeah. So this says if they want to use a Mac. So, but if they don't want to use a Mac. Then we've got to order. Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> if they don't. Possible laptop if they. Oh, I see. Okay. Don't want to use my laptop. Why would anyone not want to use it? Because they're evil. Jeez. Computers are evil. Point blank. Point. <laughs> well, and I was thinking, um, I'm actually having troubles with my laptop. They have ordered a part for it. If this doesn't work, they have suggested that I might have to get one. I've never used a Mac computer, but maybe it's something that I can learn so that we don't have to buy a new one. I think you're better off if you're used to using a yeah. 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 You, you don't want to learn to use one. You don't need to learn. Trust me, it's frustrating. No. No. Okay. Jerry. Yes. If I have no problem learning Mac. If it's easier for you to grab something like this, I'll put that with you. Okay. Uh, yeah, and hopefully this part oh, will work, but... <laughs> anyway, so that's the problem with those old IBMs. You never have that issue with the Mac. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, laser fish. This was our forty-eight hundred dollars that we talked about the other night. And if they are <coughs> able to get this finished before December thirty-first and stuff, then. We can probably pay for it out this year. Remember that we had talked about that we wouldn't um, put it over. If not, then I will have to put it in next year's budget. So I have a meeting with them next week, so we'll see what the timeline is of when we can do that. So with Brenda, they are IT providers. We need a new server, so it is going to be $6,750. And then our OWL, we haven't had a chance to actually demonstrate that. I was hoping to do a travel <coughs> run with um, Councillor Krause this evening before our meeting, and um, we just ran out of time. So our OWL is going to be $1,909, and that includes um, HST. So those we'll have to decide, and hopefully in the next few meetings we'll be able to test that out. Is this the OWL or is it? No, so this one is just our conference phone, our OWL itself. Um, it looks like able, <coughs> Yeah, and um, it records visual. like okay. everybody, so it will show the last three people that spoke, kind of in bigger pictures, and then it does a panoramic view of the office, so if we decide that we're going to record later on, or 
if we just want to continue and upload it, then we can. So a lot of um, communities are using the OWL. I know Harvey uses it in the oh, Capital Regional too, Service right. Commission. Mm -hmm. um, they use it as well. So okay. It's supposed to resolve the problem we have of hearing people on the phone. And when you're on the phone, it's really hard to hear whoever's talking to. Yeah, I understand. So, yeah, like compete, competing. Yeah, we are speaking. So um, you guys had asked the other night about the FCM membership. So I had uh, one that they had provided me last year for fees, and it was based on forty seven hundred people. So I just kind of doubled it. I have a meeting with. Um, Stephen Hart, the CAO from the City of Fredericton, he used to be um, affiliated with FCM. I think he might have been a past president or mm -hmm. something. So I have a meeting with him on Friday. I sent an email today just asking if he could refer me to somebody that could maybe do a presentation for us or provide us documentation. So he said he would call me on Friday and give me the scoop. So, um, consulting fees, I thought that we should possibly budget ten to 15000 um, because we wanted to do like the HR um, salary scales. If you guys want to have anything else done, that would be considered under general administration. We were going to apply for um, grants for that, but just in case we don't receive the grant, then we could budget for it. So that's all I had kind of under the general <coughs> administration. Is there anything that you guys could think of, or are you okay with this, or do you want everything scrapped? <laughs> I'm fine with it. No, I'm fine. Especially the consulting fees, we, need, we do need to start doing some getting consulted, that sort of thing, okay. for various. So if, if there is um, money available at the end of this year, would the server and the owl something that you would like to pay from surplus of this year and then we wouldn't have to budget for it? <coughs> Or, or do you want to wait until you guys actually see like what the, the budgets yeah. are done and all that, and then we can decide? Yeah, nice to know what the warrant is and what the rate would be in everything first before we decide if we should move things back into this year. Okay. That's I think, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so tonight we'll just kind of get ideas of what we are wish list, and then I'll bring them forward with the tax rates and stuff, and then we can work backwards. So under protected services, um, we had talked about a generator at Station 2. I thought that Station 2 actually had um, their own generator, but that is one that they share with the one that we did for Yoho Lake when we put in the transfer um, okay. switch. So if we need it in both places, we can't. Yeah. So it might be worthwhile to... Um, possibly get another generator for them because I remember when they hear Chief Krause was saying when the power goes off they have to lift those doors yeah. manually and stuff so if they have a generator that would stop that wouldn't it? <laughs> it would. Plus, it, plus they need a generator and you, you need to be able to work in there. And, right. You know. um, Councillor Krause you said that that is all wired for a generator now correct? That's wired for what we have right now we're with that one that's on the trailer. Okay. I don't know if it would require some changing over to make it a permanent well, it probably would require something more or a different change over to make it more permanent. Like that so, transfer switch or whatever it's yeah. called? Yeah, the transfer switch and whatnot. So Okay. Yeah, you want so to probably where that which is where most of your money's gonna be anyways in your gear. Mm. So Yeah, you'd want an automatic transfer switch with that too, you wouldn't Oh yeah, for sure. So now with the um, Canada Community 
building fund, which is the former gas tax. Um, late last year, they added the fire stations to that, so this might be something that we could mm -hmm. um, possibly do under gas tax, and it wouldn't even affect our operating budget. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will look into... Yeah, it's about time they did that. <coughs> into that one. That's something we've got, but tomorrow night, I think, probably, right? Yep. The planning again. <coughs> we'll add it to the list for tomorrow. Um, so the epoxy flooring for Station 2, uh, we had discussed, we had just laid the epoxy floor for the new councillors. Um, we just put one down in Station 1. They had a little bit of snow or rain the other night and somebody walked in and it was a little, they found it a little slippery, but I think it was, uh, Chief Crow said that, um, they didn't have the appropriate footwear on either and came in a little fast or whatever. So we wanted to, we had kind of thought about doing that at station two, but we thought we would give it the winter to see how it is. But, um, that is also something that could probably fall under the Canada Community Building Fund because it would be for the fire station as mm -hmm. well. So I just thought that we'll make note of it. So our bunker gear, that is an annual transfer, 50000 and the fire truck <coughs> of one fifty. So last year... Last year we had started out at 150 for the fire trucks and because of all the changes with the amalgamations and stuff, we, in order to keep the tax rates um, a little lower for the new entities, we actually had put that back from 150 to 130. But I think that maybe we should always kind of start at 150 because fire trucks are so expensive and then if we have to tweak the numbers, but from listening to Chief Kraus and knowing that we've got a few vehicles that may have to be replaced um, sooner than later, I think it's better if we do 150 and maybe even try to strive for 200000 yeah. but that's something that we can work on when we're doing the rates and stuff. Um, the annual transfer for bunker gear, that's another thing that we should uh, look at each year as well. So next one is transportation. <coughs> so I put down consulting fees 150 to <coughs> 250. We have put in this year um, for the feasibility study for the transportation and we weren't able to complete it this year. But you guys also wanted to do other things possibly for the entire entity as well. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking that 150 to 250, and then once again, we can tweak <coughs> numbers if necessary. Mm -hmm. And we had already talked about the signs the other night um, for the 75,000, we'll apply for the loan for those for the welcome to Hamwell signs. Um, environmental services. I didn't know if you wanted to do any consulting fees on there. We had talked a few years ago. Um, we were wondering about the water situation in Hanwell with so many businesses being built in the industrial park. That we really need to make sure that we have enough water. So I don't know if that is something that you want to possibly talk about this year or didn't somebody tell us a water study be like a hundred thousand dollars it probably is and i i didn't know with this if it's something that you can kind of start something and then maybe finish it in another year or if there's other things mm -hmm. to do with consulting that works our way up to that actual <coughs> study i have a question sure. um I guess my thought is, before we decide what to do, I would like to maybe have a conversation with Lonnie or whomever at the Regional Service Commission, because I mean, when people divide lots, I mean, they do have to do water studies to make sure they have enough water. 
So I'm just wondering how much, like how would we go about it? Because I mean, obviously you're not going to do the whole area. Um, so I would like to talk to them first to see what they think that if we're going to do something on our own above and beyond what the, the Regional Service Commission already does, what it is we should do. Yeah, Tony uh, Gerling had talked about they had a, a water study. He did a quite a large there. water study years ago, too. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something we maybe should tap into because I'm, I'm sure he provides the concept. Yeah. I think the concern, too, came about because of a few things. We keep tapping into the same aquifer, right? Mm -hmm. So even the school, that would put a bigger drain. So mm -hmm. the more we're building and, and all of that stuff, we, want, we don't want to end up happening to us what happened to me in Maryland. And, and we don't really know if it's the same aquifer or not. <coughs> I mean, I'm not a, you know, a water water guy. I wouldn't know if there's one aquifer in Hamlet or a dozen. Yeah, that's why I was thinking if we start with the Regional Service Commission to see what mm -hmm. they know. See what they know and see what Tony knows. See Tony, yeah, because I know Tony has offered before to yeah. show us his. Now his is not new. Yeah, he's, what he told me about his water study was massive water. Oh, was it, it, massive yeah. water. Yeah, yeah so. that's what he's told me too. But it also depends on which area he's, he, if yeah. he's just looking at one area <clears throat> where we're looking at Again, many, right. areas. Yeah. many areas. Many areas. I suspect there's many aquifers. I was more than one because my well is only 65 feet down. <laughs> right across the street from me, she's 240 or something mm. like that. Yeah, the one with the big long extensions on it or whatnot, they were yeah. down 400 feet. Yeah. And they built that house yeah. 30 years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, this is why I think we need a little guidance on, you know, because we need to know where we want to look to mm -hmm. begin with. We applied for a grant. Did they we say didn't why? Yeah. Yep. They did didn't they, say why. They didn't give us anything? Nope. No? Okay. No, they don't, they don't really give you, they, you go on, you see, they say just <clears throat> check the website and it'll show you who got the grants. They don't tell you why. Okay. Hmm. Good to know. Yeah. We cannot, there's nothing to say we can't do it again. No, mm -hmm. true. Right? True. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Okay, so um, the next is parks and recreation. So these are your ones that are like green and black coffee. Did I do them in color? Maybe I did yours in black and white. No, I got green and maroon. I got green and green or green or something. Green, purple, green, maybe. green or gray. Green and gray or black. Yeah. Anyway. And then I got another one that's in just black and white. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with the first one. The very first line says age friendly supplies. So, what I provided to Taylor, our recreation director, was just everything that was on um, the forms that, we, that I provided to you the other mm -hmm. night that was under recreation. And remember those, how I had those copies with the breakdown sheets and we went into more details. That is where he is getting these figures. So um, under hand mall days, <clears throat> um, on the sheets that I gave you the other night, we had increased it. I had 7,000, but you guys had increased it to 10,000. So, but I forgot to uh, mention that when I gave them the sheet. So. You need to change that amount to 10000 So for <clears throat> Himmel Sports, we didn't have budgets previously, but the T-ball equipment is <laughs> really needs to be replaced. So he's estimated that at about $7,500. And this equipment is stuff that we received as a donation when we took over um, Brookdale Park from the association. So I'm not sure when it was purchased, but um, it, he said that if we have availability in our budget, we really should um, upgrade that. So <coughs> the next thing is a junior um, MBA program. So he was speaking with the director today, and the cost would be about $500 to get into that, and he could start a junior MBA program here that we could do in partnership with the school kind of thing. And um, Taylor said that he is very interested 
in doing that and doing all the research for it and that I believe that in our next council meeting or something maybe Taylor could um, speak on it but I believe that if we partner with the NBA, the junior NBA, they provide the coaches and all of that stuff so it might be something to look into for so, so is this sort of a, like a membership fee? Is that really? Yeah. So uh, he said that um, they would pay like a registration fee, which would offset the five hundred dollars as well. But I'm not sure exactly how many students it is, or too many of the details. He had just got off the phone shortly before it was time for us to leave at four o'clock. So it's something we can come back at, but. If the cost is going to be five hundred dollars, it's pretty minimal mm -hmm. on a yeah. two or three million dollar budget. So, yeah. um, the larger youth event in the summer, the um, sizzling summer social that they put on with the bouncy castles and everything else this summer <clears throat> was a huge success, and he would really like to do it again or even a little bit bigger. So. <coughs> He didn't really increase the budget too much more. Swing him up to four thousand if we were really good. Yeah. Yeah. So the recreation master plan, um, the budget was put in at fifty thousand. This would have to go out um, for a tender and quotes or whatever. But when the previous recreation director was here um, they had just done one in his previous employment of Salisbury, Salisbury, I believe, Salisbury. or Petacodiac or yeah. somewhere, and he said it was right around fifty thousand. So we just kind of used that figure for right now, and we can apply for the grant for, for grants, right? <coughs> um, so miscellaneous, we always um, put in a little bit of miscellaneous. So. Five thousand or fifty thousand? It's fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. Okay, it's missing zero. That's all. Okay. No, it is. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The comma's in the right spot, but it's missing zero. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fifty thousand. No worry. Yeah. Um. So, next is Rally Cap Initiative Program. <clears throat> this is a youth baseball programming, and this one is through Baseball Canada. <clears throat> So one is baseball and one is basketball. basketball. Yeah. And um, he said that he had left a message with them. So I think he said they had a meeting on Friday, possibly. So that could be. I wonder if that would probably be kind of the same price. And once again, it was probably goes by registration. <coughs> so the cost would probably be offset. So Terry. Backing up to the miscellaneous and other, yeah. what's the difference? Other recreation initiative. Probably more like uh, miscellaneous, like things that break and stuff, <clears throat> operational stuff, as opposed to recreation initiatives might be some kind of a program comes up and you know, costs us two grand a year. That would be what my thought would be probably. So one should be more operational and one... Um, well, technically both operational. One's more of like a disposable. I, I don't know how to think of it. So should it be? I'm basketball. just wondering if it should just be under like one. Just fixing. combine it? Yeah. yeah. Well, when, uh, if you're fixing things that are broken, one is, that's one is... Like but then shouldn't that come under no, maintenance? That, that would be under maintenance. maintenance. Um, other recreation. I, I'm thinking this is just other programs like... Like, see how we've got, like, age-friendly Christmas lights, Christmas Easter extravaganza. This would just be other something recreation else. Something else events up, yeah. that... Like a card, if we want to do, like, a card tournament or something, and we need to you buy know, cookies or something. Paint like sip or... And yeah. miscellaneous would be... Miscellaneous would be if... The other supplies you have to buy here and there. We need to buy a deck of cards, or if we're having, like, a crib tournament, and you need to buy some crib So one's programming... Programs and one supplies. Yeah, maybe? like that's what I miscellaneous that's would be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To me, miscellaneous would sense? be anything that might not fall in one of those categories there. That. Yeah. 
Um, <clears throat> next is like our Remembrance Day ceremony. That's fine. Ski and snowshoes. Spook Fest probably increase that a little bit. Can I just add something to the Spook Fest? Excuse me. I don't know if you remember, but we got asked about lighting for Spook Fest <coughs> at Spook Fest. People were asking about lighting for that night out on the trail. I don't know if that's something you folks have ever talked about or what that. I know that they bought. He bought a lot of lights. Lights. It was like little lanterns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lanterns he bought little lanterns. And stuff that yeah, was... so I'm not sure exactly what they were talking about. If they yeah, had cause... concerns for safety, but because of the dark. The whole point of it being scary is to be in the dark. I yeah. Know. <laughs> I know. It's kind of it's they were going to have a meeting after school fest. To so. you and I, they were like, if there were just more lights, and I was like, oh, I'll put it in my head and bring it up, but I'm just not mm -hmm. sure. It's I don't know. Discuss, so. I don't know. I mean. <clears throat> People that want more lights bring a flashlight. Or yeah, or so, yeah. and, and I think the thing is, you're not going to please everybody. There no. were older kids that were like, oh, this is lame, and younger kids that were like, this is really good. They listened, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Exactly but I mean, they, the little kids you hope would come before dark anyway. Yeah. And the older ones would come after dark and be scared. I didn't find it dark on the trail. <laughs> yeah, and I just didn't get a chance to go out. Yeah, she yeah. wasn't up. I mean, like the, the even the elements that were out there, most yeah. of them were lit. Yeah, right? and I think his so, intention is to add more of that right. because you know we up the budget so we can add more of those pieces out there. Yeah, no, yeah. I think it was a really great success. Oh, it's been the last <coughs> years have been great. I know Taylor was going to have a meeting with the committee and kind of you know what worked well and what didn't yeah. work so good and mm -hmm. come up with any recommendations mm -hmm. for next year. Yeah. I don't know if he's done that yet or not. I haven't heard. <coughs> yeah, we need two of those. <laughs> Maybe just ask Taylor yeah. if he had any. Mm. If they yeah, come up with any, any know, changes. Yeah, he was supposed to have a meeting. I think it was last last night. Yeah, it was supposed to be last night or whatever, and then <coughs> only two could attend or something. So they are planning on having a, okay. yeah. another so meeting. Um. Pass it on to Taylor. You can put it in this meeting. Mm -hmm. Yep, so sports equipment for the kids' games and stuff. Um, the s summer socials. So that was pretty well aired like for kind of <coughs> recreation. <coughs> stuff which I thought was pretty reasonable. Um, so then I went to parks. Where is, there's one, where is this, just, sorry, just give me one sec. Oh, okay, so I have a separate sheet for you guys, um, it's black and white, it says Sully's Athletic Order. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is not on these sheets because I... I believe it's like we had talked about the school's MOU, so I think we're just going to kind of put it all into that same category like with the janitor and the gym supervisors and all that. So all of that still got to be figured out before our budget. Um, however, we have to supply the equipment over there because they, they give us a room at the school and all of our equipment um, will be in there. So I really think, if possible, that we should purchase this stuff this year. Um, so it's just like our volleyballs, um, badminton, shuffle, shuttles, um, volleyball, basketballs, just your normal thing. And then um, this cart, <laughs> excuse me. So, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So, for the volleyball, mm -hmm. we only have to supply the ball. They'll supply us with the poles. Will we have access to the poles, or do we have to also have our own poles? No, so over there we have the, all the nets. Okay, so the nets, we can use their nets. We don't have to buy our own. Okay. So, so this is what we will purchase and keep at the school? At the school, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it only makes sense we'd have to have our own equipment. We can't expect yes. to use the school's yes, equipment. Yes, of course. 
Um, but this can all come out of the former gas tax fund money, can't it? It's recreational. It's recreation. We're running our programs. It, I would have to look because we put down uh, under our recreation as parks and playgrounds. This isn't really a park and it's not really a playground. But it is all rec for all recreational. It is, but you have to say what your project is. So our projects have been accepted by Ottawa mm -hmm. as being we are going to install so many parks. And Didn't we say MOU with the school when we did that? No, we did um, the uh, equipment over at the school for 325000 for the yeah, walking trail that. and all that, but we've never had one for So it. then should this go into the 2024 so that we can put it? It could go into 2024. Or has it already been done? No, um, 2024 we won't do. I don't send in those reports until April, so that means we have no equipment until... No, it means has this been ordered already? No. No. Also, would this be considered capital anyway? This would be considered capital? Would be? Like, is there a depreciation on like basketball? Um, I, no, it probably wouldn't be capital. No, no because be equipment. It, be equipment. it's, it's equipment. going to be... It's just going to go under recreation equipment. So I thought the gas tax was only used for capital. No, that's what I'm mm. saying. I don't think that we can use yeah, it Yeah, I don't as think we could either. It's capital. Okay. Or whatever. So, um, it's, yeah, it's like pretty, either I can... It's a slippery... Yeah, but it's also a pretty small band, right? True. Yeah, so... Like and if we, we, have enough and if we wait, I mean, we want to start the program in January. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. So if we. So even if something happens and gas tax came back and said, if I contact them and they said yes, it could be. I don't send those reports in until April. So yeah, we're going to go from January to April mm -hmm. until our residents that they can't use the school because we have no equipment. Well, we have to get that. Like I said, if you can use it on this year's surplus, by all means. Yeah. Well, then this could be a learning you know. experience. Like maybe if we think about now having to. Replace this equipment every so many years. Like, maybe consider. That's right. We should we should buy more than one uh, soccer ball. Do we have one soccer ball in there? Maybe we. We we just bought a. What did we buy? Five or six soccer balls. Is it just complement already? <coughs> oh, okay. So yeah. yeah. That's fine. <coughs> What's an indoor competition ball? Anyone know? I'm just curious. I think that's that's that, that's a volleyball. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a Mikasa. Somebody look that up. Yeah. So there's three training volleyballs and then there's three competition Perfect. volleyballs. Thank you. Yeah. A different size? Uh, different density and weight. We don't have to have anything special for that programmable wall, do we? Because they have a machine that basically turns the whole wall into a sensor. Mm. Right? Do you need anything special for that? Mm. A sensor for what? You could basically say, for example, uh, tennis. You can put three tennis nets like you're competing against somebody, and then when you hit the ball, like you, could, you would see where it bounces. The computer senses where it hits the net, and it calculates what would happen on the other side. It's pretty wild, actually. It's pretty updated technology. First time I've heard of it. I didn't even know that existed. They have a mat. The whole it's like the whole side of the gym, man. It probably cost fifty thousand dollars. Something like a golf simulator. Something it's like bait. It, I'm sure it probably could do that too. And they have, and you can basically program all kinds of different options into it and makes it look like you're in an arena and stuff. It's pretty wild. Oh. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you're wondering if they need any special If there's any special sensors for that. Like, right? Or they may not just allow us to use that. Might not. Anybody to use that. Yeah, something Taylor can check out. He probably can check it out, yeah. I mean, I can check it out. I've got the, the one of the gym teachers that said Taylor could use a good friend of mine. Yeah. He must know. He must know, yeah. yeah. Because I'm sure they use it for gym classes all the time for training and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I've checked that out with Phil actually. Or Taylor can check it out. So if you can't get a hold of anybody, I can check it too. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we will try to um, do that immediately now. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so next is still under parks and playgrounds, so this is more of the parks. So boardwalks, 
There's gravel and stain, and I believe a lot of this, um, we wanted to possibly do some work at the David Bell Nature Park. Nature Park and stuff. Did we ever get the bridge stained out here? I haven't been back with this no. year. It's in dire straits. Yeah, they coat it with Thompson's. Yeah, they do the boardwalk and, and the bridge. Yeah. But did they sand it before they coat it? Wouldn't, wouldn't have to. I mean, it's just it's a weather like a waterproofing. Mm, it was had mold and mildew on it. Last I looked at it, it needed to be sanded. Yeah, you could scrape the mold and mildew off. I suppose this is just a wood preservative they put on it to keep it from rotting. I know, but if it's rotting underneath, <laughs> it needs it needs to be really. And other projects, certainly something to look into for next year. Yeah. I never looked under the bridge, so I don't know what the underneath is like. Yeah. Be worthwhile though, that's an expensive oh, bridge. Yeah, it was on the handrails and stuff. There was a lot of mold and mildew. Yeah, yeah. it was, and that was like true. I guess I wasn't back at all this year. Oh no, <coughs> someday if I ever get time to walk back there. It's a troll under the bridge. Yes. <laughs> get the troll to do it. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't look. And it's copious free time. Mm -hmm. So this boardwalk is supposed to be for the David Bell? Well, for where, any, anywhere, anywhere, like well, I, think the one out, I think the one out back is broke too, isn't it, or something's, something's wrong with the one out back of the system out behind Hamill Place? Um, the, the bridge? Yeah, or something. Yes, um, and... the mayor and Dan are supposed to look at that yeah. this week or something. Dan brought out some 6 by 6s on there, so we're going to, it's the bridge that got washed out from that last heavy rain we had. So we just got to put it back in place and figure out how we want to do it. So we can use anybody's assistance if they want to come in. I guess my thought was, do we know how much boardwalk needs to be replaced at the David Bell one? Because when we walked, <coughs> yeah. it was in dire. All, all of it. Yes. Yeah. That's going to be a huge project to uh, take on. Need. Yeah. Right, but once again, like if it's major stuff then that's going under parks and playgrounds, right? So that can go under your yeah. guest, your yeah. Canada Community Building so, but, that, but does that need to be, <coughs> It's to me it's going to be a lot, yes, yeah, so it needs to be going elsewhere, but. So like I would, uh, like I, so under the gas tax, I'm going to continue to call it gas tax, um, I wouldn't charge that to for a uh, gallon of stain. I'm going That's to take that out of hmm. this kind of thing. If I need even probably five hundred dollars in boards, I'm not going to put that through. That no, way. I understand that, but I'm trying to figure out what what the ten thousand is going to go for. Yeah, I have no idea. That's gravel stain yeah. Yeah. repairs and maintenance. Like but gravel is not that much. It's well, gravel we brought back ten loads of gravel to have, so we wouldn't have to track right. over the exactly the rubberized trail. So there's there should be lots of gravel in reserve out there. Exactly. Yeah. But so I'm just trying to figure out, and stains obviously not all that it's, expensive. No. no so I'm just trying to figure out what it, what it was for. Whether that's too high. Yeah, whether it's too high or... Well, yeah. if 7,000 wasn't enough and they put it to 10... Mm -hmm. well, I'm just suggest, been looking to see what what, what, was what it was. See, I don't, I don't have those because everything... We don't have the break down. But, I mean, there's going to be lots of maintenance in various different places and parks. I mean, there could be stuff at David Bell. There could be stuff here. I mean, 10,000 is not a lot when you're... Well, all those boardwalks at David Bell have to be replaced. Yeah, but that's, that's going to be a capital project. project. And that's yeah, going to be a, a tender right. route and somebody yeah. going to do the whole thing. But I mean, so. I think when you, I don't think that this is yeah, so just gravel and stain. I mean, this is maintenance, anything that comes along. Yeah, because as of the end of October, we had used 1,300, but we did nothing. <coughs> Out of the I think we can just ask him to elaborate on the 10,000 to find out what he's talking about. Well, it's not him. We talked about it the other night when I gave you these sheets the okay. other night. So we spent. So all the 2024, most of this, unless it is kind of these new things like this equipment and all that, mm -hmm. he has taken that from the breakdown sheets that I provided okay. to you okay. the other day. So we spent $1,300 in 2023. Mm -hmm. So and we yes. are anticipating 10000 So maybe no, just... No, I'm not. Like we can, like I said, we can, we can just flag it if it's one of those things where the where 
you know, we need to reduce, that might be one yeah. that goes down. Yeah. Does valid. that make sense? That's valid. Because yeah. yeah. remember, like, when I said, like, we have broke these down into line items, like mm -hmm. the park lease, boardwalk, mileage, mm -hmm. ready, John. The government does not see that. No. They do not care about that. They care about the bottom line that parks and recreation or parks mm -hmm. is going to spend $70,000 or whatever. Right, yeah. <clears throat> That's kind but of... But that may be an area that we can reduce if we're over. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Terry, this sheet here, just to be clear, this is for upgrades, maintenance of existing facilities? This has got nothing to do with new projects? No, it, it can be planned. Yeah, there's a new project, the BMX track, and David Bell, 55,000. That's yeah. the other one. Yeah. yeah. So, there's a potential new project in, in Ward 5, so maybe we should have a line in here for some funds for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's probably, um, do you want to elaborate any tonight on that or do you want to well, um, wait until you know more? We're just chatting with, with the people now and uh, uh, Mayor Morrison is aware of the situation. Um, I don't think we can share much more at this point. No, there's nothing to, I mean, nothing to affirm. affirm there's nothing, it's just, just, just chat right now but it, it's promising <coughs> something could come out of it. So. It might come to fruition, who knows. Yeah. But like I said, you made some good inroads. Yeah. So why not? So. But it would require some groundwork. Uh, major. Uh, not major, but major? Okay. some drainage and leveling. And yeah. 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 And so, once again, that could be gas tax. part of the gas tax money, too, right? Uh, so, with the gas tax from 2019 to 2023, we had received. To 2.3 million over the four years. So I'm thinking now that we have almost doubled in population that we should have a fairly. It'll probably go with three. Yeah, we only went up about 50 percent. Yeah, population. 50 percent. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm thinking that we'll probably be close to three. We should yeah, be over so three, I would think, or whatever. So um, there's certainly room there that we can do mm -hmm. and then any projects and stuff that we can think of which we'll discuss more um, tomorrow mm -hmm. night because we'll have to do our new um, five year plan. Five -year plan. Mm -hmm. So we have nothing for the Yoho Park on this sheet here? Um, no and that is also yeah, that, that, that could be because I mean that's going to be a park as well right? Mm -hmm. Oh yes it's going to be a park. Yeah, like the David Bell BMX Park should move over to. That's what yeah, I that, that can be yeah. over to yeah. gas tax as well. Yeah, that's what I was wondering if it was on here. Why the Yoko? Yeah. The same as the splash yeah, pad. You have a, a space for all of these other potentials, and then put something just so that it's kind of like <laughs> there. And yeah. then if it gets moved, then bonus. yeah. So I guess I, in order for me to be able to put some numbers into our budget, and for me to have an idea for tomorrow night for our capital meeting if I'm not going to put anything if you don't want to put in a BMX trail. We might as well just cut it now instead of me figuring it all up. So that's kind of, we've kind of put everything awesome. out here that we can think of and then... But you could flag some of these that will win the five years of capital, right? Yeah. yeah. I guess my concern with, as you said, do we want to do it or not, is trying to set priorities. So there's the Yoho Park, <coughs> there's the Recreation Building, there's a splash pad. Um, well, that's part of more than I think, right? It's the five-year plan. Well, yeah, but, but what I'm saying, but we need to kind of, are we doing it or are we not doing it as, as per... Or when are we doing it? Or when are we doing when, it? Yeah. Or, yeah. Like I said, that's part of the five-year you know, overall right. plan. Yeah, because we can't so we do it all. Really it can't be all vision. done next year. No, it can't all be done no. next year. We can't do this all at once. No, no. But we don't have a vision. We don't have a, yeah. the priorities. And that's it, kind so. of ties in with everything else, like um, strategic planning. 
we really need to budget for consulting for mm -hmm. strategic we do. planning because then if we have our capital, if we have our wish list, and then we can work on the strategic planning, all of that falls into place. So if we say that we're going to do this and this and this, then <coughs> maybe you need additional staff. So then that comes into play all in the strategic plan. So everything, like fits. all of our capital depends on our strategic, which depends on staffing or mm -hmm. space. <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, that's so, why I wish we would have, yeah, done that first before we got here. But we're not. Yeah. But like I said, yeah. our five-year capital. I'm just getting ideas because my report to Ottawa doesn't go in until April. So our strategic plan, we could have our strategic plan done, like January, winter. February. Yes. Yes. And then from our strategic plan, then we can build on our capital. But at least if we kind of had ideas like, yes, I'm very interested in possibly the next five years doing the BMX and David Bell. Yes, in the next year, I'm interested in doing a park at Yoho Lake. Next two years, we're interested in doing something in Island View. Like... Like for me, the BMX and additional BMX at David Bell, I'd really like to see the first one be built yeah. mm -hmm. and see how well it's going to be utilized yeah. before we do another one. Do another, do another one. one. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of my thought on yeah. it. Yeah, like I, there to me for David Bell um, Park, there's so much potential. Exactly. Out there, like if we have a BMX trail here. We've got a beautiful baseball field there. You could maybe utilize the baseball field because we already have the soccer field over here, but there's also the soccer field there that we could be working on Anything as well, like, yeah. kind of thing. So to me, there's so many things like if something happens and we don't have the water availability to do our ice rink here, they have wells and stuff at the David Bell. Like maybe we can do the ice rink there. They've got the lights. They've got the well. Yeah, that Different place things. is much more better suited for a rink and anything like over here. So there's so many things, but it's like we've just kind of we've got to kind of have everybody's ideas of things that they want to do, and then we'll do a strategic plan as soon as possible in January and then get all of that going so that in the future that is how our directive will be because the last few years, I mean we've been new and we have just been doing what we need to do like at that time. So now is a great time now that we, <coughs> you know, got our municipal office and our community center and fire stations and stuff like that. This is a great time for us to be thinking of how we're strategically going to increase everything. I'd really like to be able to have more resident input too into what they would like to see within Hanwell. Like well, all of this, <coughs> this summer, um, the recreation students put out uh, a survey. A survey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And got that back, and then most of it was like the um, well, Jared put one, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, yes, and he got a lot of info back. Yeah, and it was splash pad was uh, was huge, huge one, huge on the list was a splash yeah. pad. Well, it must be the pool, a pool. A pool. Yeah. yeah, they wanted a pool, <laughs> kind of thing. So I mean, we but that should be something that we should sit down with and look at and review and see if. It makes sense for Hanwell, right? Did that survey go across the whole community? It did, yeah. Um, sorry, I don't. I, I, I wasn't I, here at the time. I, I did ask, and I'm pretty sure it did. It did, yeah. <coughs> yeah, well, it would have for sure. Candace, you have a question? I just had a comment. I I know when I was going to Jores that this is the stuff. This it's all here. People were talking about the rings. I mean, the pool is not here, but. You know, um, they were talking about a rink, they were talking about a ball field, a 
you know, and I, I see plans for ball and talk of ball bases and that sort of thing, so I think you're hitting most of the things, but yeah, it would be interesting to see what people have said in that. Yeah, there must, somebody must have did a summary of that survey. Sort of. So, so was someone brought plan. back to council? I don't, I don't know. I, I think it was it. sent out as one of his reports, like yeah. along with maybe right. yeah, a management session. Maybe, and, yeah. But we never really, we Talk never went it through it. We never right. discussed it. No. It was yeah. just, this is what but the input was. We don't feel we have what we need from it. It's a very simple thing, is it not, to make up a survey and do something again? Mm -hmm. like if we feel like we didn't get exactly what we were looking for. Or not for, enough responses yeah. from or, the yeah, like, area. Yeah. How did the survey go? How was it communicated? On Facebook. Yeah. On Facebook. That's okay. the only way we can do it. I mean, and on the website, yeah. there's no other way to do it. Unless we did right? the mail. I was just going to say. We did the mail out. We, we tried the mail out before with the Herald. We got two responses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hmm. it's, it's hard to... Because people don't want to fill something and then bring it in. Yeah, social media is instant gratification. Type yeah, of it's really it's easy. Really, it's really it's sorry to cut you off. That's okay. It's really interesting because I found the <clears throat> same as you can. It's like I heard it at the door. So, and it and it's really the only way that you can get get that information is going to every door because we don't have everyone's emails. We can't email everybody, and so. Yeah. so we rely on social media and we rely on the Herald to be able to get that out. But it but it does mean, you know, it's much it's so much easier, right? When you go to a door and somebody's like, uh, uh what are you doing you're here? here? And then you and you're like, you know, <coughs> what are your thoughts on the community? And I mean that's that's where I heard pickleball. Like I heard that all the time mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. I was canvassing, right? And I heard pickleball didn't... all the time. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah right? because like, pickleball is huge right huge. now, and that is why we were really diving into pickleball, like we've got pickleball out here. There was a lady, um, before we even had the lines painted at David Bell, she was literally taking a piece of chalk or, no, soap bar or soap. something oh and my doing her lines and Taylor said like they were practically perfect kind of thing. That's a good initiative. But <laughs> they, a lot of people have their own nets and stuff, those pop-up nets, and that's what they're using. Like pickleball is huge, it's and huge. it's something that we really need to really dive into. And we have the ability with the school, at the with the MOU, to have um, six nets. Mm -hmm. and I think that's what Taylor said, was six courts. So if we do the strategic plan, we review the survey, we do our strategic plan, then would we have an open house to present okay. to yeah. our residents? I think that's a good idea. I think it'd be so great. Too. Yeah. David, you had a question? If we're reaching out to the community and we're talking about an awful lot of the activities that are child-based, kid-based, okay, and again, you had mentioned the survey went out through Facebook and social media or whatever, is there any means by which we can actually utilize the school and have the students take home that specific information Good idea. Okay, that we're having a survey because that's going to hit directly the parents that in turn whose children are going to be affected by these recreational. So just have a note going home that there we're going to do a survey on social media so they can look at or, it. Or, or even have a form that they turn to fill out and then back, 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 back to the school and so the work sure with Mr. Ford yeah. and grabbing right. all that information. It would be one part of the survey. We'd still utilize the, the social media, etc. But you would be able to hit a large portion of the handwell population, if you will, mm -hmm. you do the that, same are directly, that are directly That's at the in Kings Clear School. Kings, you'd have to yeah. Kings Clear School. Both. Both. Yeah. Both. 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 yeah, both. That's a really good idea because not only, I mean, a lot of this, especially for the school, is not kid related. Mm -hmm. Right? So the MOU with the school, um, like Saturday, is open gym. So most of it is it's going to be. I, I know um, my previous employer, when we had it, a lot of it was um, seniors doing volleyball and pickleball or whatever. So your pickleball is going yeah. to yeah. be a huge thing. So 
by doing the survey, you're not only going to get the kids' um, choices, but you're going to get the parents' get the choices, choices as, well. as well. So, I mean, there's that's a lot of people that you're yep. hitting. That's a really good idea. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, so that's something we certainly work on. Yeah, because we didn't have the opportunity to do that before, really, not easily, because at like George Street and stuff, it's it's mixed. Yeah, we, we, we have the ideal means by which to reach out to people now. Yeah, that's no, a good idea. And I don't so think we can with it. Certainly, do. Uh, yeah. Say anything. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I yes. think we should move forward. With yeah, that. so you got all the Taylor. Yeah. And you can structure the, the survey or the input. What do you want for your child? And what do you want for yourself? Mm -hmm. yeah. What can we What can we do to make your? <coughs> yeah. No, I think that's a great idea. That's a good idea. It's a good idea, but you're also talking. There's three other. There's two other schools. Uh, Hamwell students in it. That's just elementary schools. And then you've got yours on top of that. And obviously FHS kind of deal. So it's uh, it, it, to get it all the way around, like you say, it's, it's pretty well going to hit all the schools to be well, taken home. Well, we did Kings Clear and we did the Hanwell. I'm sure if we work with uh, the principal or vice principal of FHS. And the only yeah. other consideration is. Yeah, yeah, they they will not um, because it was too hard because we were going to do oh, uh, for the um, buoyant alerts or whatever, and they said there's just it's too hard. There's too many students to go. Okay, well you live in Fredericton and you live in Hamble, so you take this piece of paper. It's too, yeah, that's too hard. So it, it's, it's too hard. hard. <coughs> but that's still However, one reason we can't do uh, the yeah. Academy plus Kingsley. So yeah. if we did we those two schools, that's a good start. I Chances agree. are that the the seniors that are in the high school, I guarantee that they're on social media. I was just the going to say, you could probably ask if you could make an announcement too. This that, is that's for, the key. Yeah. You, right. I could talk, touch base with the principal. And listen, would you be able to make an announcement on a weekly, you know, for a week or whatever? We have a survey. Coming. You know, there's a survey that we would like the students of Hanwell to take home to their parents. You might get five percent. Of the kids coming down, you might get ten percent of the kids coming down. At least that's more than zero. Yeah, but I don't think the school will do that because they wouldn't do it for the other project. No. But they might make an announcement for the the students to be aware that there's a uh, survey out on social media to have a look at it. Either way, there's no work on their part then, right? They don't. We're reaching out, yeah. yeah, which is all we can do. Yeah, and I, I have of... I have no issue actually reaching out to the principal or vice principal and saying, "Listen, is there a means by which we could do that?" And then get back to you guys. Yeah. Mm. Which that's okay. I think that would be Taylor's. Yeah, Taylor to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's operational. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't have to be one way. That's a really good way. But you could also use your Herald and you could also yeah. use your that's Facebook right. pages. And that way you wouldn't be completely excluding people who only have a Cool St. Anne kids or only have FHS kids. Like you're offering it to everybody, but you're also saying, hey, it's easier if we send it home in your bag here at this school. Or, yeah. and you've also got your home school group, too. Yeah, and you've got your churches you also. Be, so churches are another way to reach out to, to people. In the community. And chances are, if there's a really good chance that if you're in the high school or junior high or whatever, yeah. you've probably got a sibling that's in yeah. Maybe school well, some, or, well, maybe or a relative well. or something that would probably yeah. um, talk about that's a great idea, Councillor Holt, and we'll uh, we'll definitely look into that. Um, so Dan was saying that we need concrete picnic tables for the Hamilton <coughs> Park and Playground, and Councillor Kroos and I were talking about this earlier today, and. Councillor Crouch, you said that they were about a couple of years ago, they were around 500? Uh, I think. 800. No, I think. 800 bucks. 800. So I know that the ones that we have out front that um, have got the wood and the, the benches, you mean? The benches and stuff, they were around six, weren't they? Benches were 
Yeah, they were about six apiece. So I'm I'm thinking for a picnic table and stuff, probably a thousand dollars with. I can check on that tomorrow or submit to them. I can actually check. I have a contact. Yeah. And the other thing is, though, is that usually includes the price of setup because it's not like you're going to be able to. Get the picnic table and the pieces and take them out into the daycare park and set them up there. That's not a. That's really not an option because they're they're too big. We wouldn't put them out on the trail anyway, would we? Yeah. We can't. Yeah, we can't put them on the trail because we can't get them over the. Uh, like no, you wouldn't want them up there anyway. Like maybe a couple in in the park area, yeah. but. But Would they need concrete pads underneath too? No, like, no they just put them on the trail. <laughs> Sink to China. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking yeah. in some places. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, we could put a couple on the in the park area. Councillor Cress, are the ones out at David Bell Memorial Park, are they on concrete pads? The one out there is because it's um under the, gazebo, well, it's it's under the with the with the roof on it, right? Right. Right by the playground. So it just happened to have a a concrete slab under it. So but I would imagine you could as long as the ground is relatively flat, like the city parks, you know, they're going to put them up there probably sporadically in their parks. They're probably not going to put 10 slabs down to hold 50 tables because the cost of that would just be kind of, you know, without weight. Yeah, I'm just curious, just for budgeting purposes. Uh, you could put a, like a small concrete right. pad under each leg, like a, you know, like a 16 by 16 inch. It's like a, you know, a concrete block type, two inches thick, they're 16 by 16, put them under the legs and that'll spread the weight out. So I would think sink. it'd be heavy enough, you wouldn't need to. Nice, if you had a nice gravel pad to sink put sink them on, that would probably be plenty. Well, if, if, you, if Dan was suggesting them, where was he suggesting putting them? I don't know, I think he was just... I, I think down a, a whole bunch of. Right, so. I think ideas. it's closer, like mm -hmm. right here, obviously, yeah, because you will need a tractor or whatever to lift them to, yeah. to move them on there. So like I one just, in the gazebo would be nice. Mm. Putting one in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like that is concrete floor. Yeah, there was. Yeah, yeah. there is. Yeah. Maybe whoever you're speaking to, but I no, right, could tell you. What I would. Know. Yeah. No, it's what they need to do. It's on. There's wood underneath it. There's no concrete in the middle. Yeah. But it's certainly, it certainly is packed well. But then I wonder if you want to use the gazebo for something else, would it be best to have a wooden one to move it out? Yeah. Like if you want right. the band? Yeah, yeah, like, that's you right. Know, just yeah. like yeah. one yeah, guy yeah, playing right. acoustic yeah. guitar or something. Yeah. You, right. But we could put a concrete picnic table well, over there in the park somewhere. Why don't we just see what he was thinking to see if it's really something we want? Yeah, yeah. Because we have picnic tables up. I think if, as yeah. we replace them, we'd probably be better off to replace them with concrete. So. But once you have concrete, you can't move them anywhere that's either. Right. So, yeah. so that's why them. I'm saying, why don't we see where we want to put them? You can mm -hmm. move the wooden ones around. So, and that's I kind of I like the idea of the wooden ones. Me too. Unless, Me too. unless it's um, unless we're finding that they're being vandalized. That's what I was yes, saying. but they're not. They're I don't not, think they're not. Yeah. No. So then, you know, I, I mean, I prefer the wooden ones because you can't move them. Yeah. Get stuffed mm -hmm. in and out, move them yeah. where you need them. And I mean, but if there's a place we want a couple, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Why don't we just find out what he's thinking? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I really, I, and I really don't know if he was. I think he was just kind of brains, because I mean, he wants a, a truck and all kinds of stuff, so right? So he, I, I think he was just kind of thinking of yeah, no, you know, possible yeah. suggestions. I can see here the wooden ones because there's a lot of traffic here, and I can see over there at the Dave Bell to be concrete because. There's not a lot, as much traffic until you get that, the amount of people using it up, then it might be better over there to have a couple of Well, they were, ones. Or we're getting very <laughs> of Yeah, but they're not going to be set on fire <laughs> <laughs> and burnt or anything, hopefully. Yeah, that was why we chose concrete. I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, we always had our BMI truck <clears throat> up earlier today. Yeah. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, talk to Dan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to get into all of the equipment stuff because that's mm -hmm. just what we've already talked about the other night. Um, he did suggest a flashing light for the truck. <coughs> oh, the, for yeah. our work truck. Oh. Yeah, if you're going to do that, you want to put a uh, back rack on it also. 
as a back rack. If we're going to put anything on the truck, you could tie it to it, mm -hmm. and it'll save you getting the window smashed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the it looks like a. Oh, I know what you mean. So like it, a grate? It, yeah, it protects your back window yeah. in the truck and yeah, it also like gives you rounds. something to, if you want to tie something on, you got the back rack yeah. to tie it on to. And you can put the flashing light on the back rack. So, mm. so for $375, we might as well just get it this year and have it done over with. Well, it yeah. should just be one of those miscellaneous things. Yeah. That you yeah. Miscellaneous it's just like for putting it. a spray-in bed liner in that truck. It's something that should have to keep the truck from being yeah. rusted and yeah. damaged and whatnot. I can't believe you don't have one of those. One of yeah, that's, um, yeah. Yeah. that's down further. So you're looking at a back rack, spraying bed lighter, liner, and a, and a and like, caution light. I mean, that yeah. could come under the normal maintenance of the truck, really. Yeah. We should just do that, you know. Yeah, we should, yeah. Um, so the new baseball um, bases for David Bell. For I actually have them. I got new bases for that two oh. years ago. Oh, so we don't have to have this? No. Okay. Oh. Well, they did increase the size of the baseball um, bases. What's that? They did increase the size of the baseball bases this year, didn't they? Oh, I don't know. I just, uh -huh. I literally got them in, I got them last, well, I got them before we amalgamated. So I got them uh, two summers ago, well, two seasons ago, I guess. So, and they're, and they're still using them all over because my young fellows, my daughter both play ball, so the same identical basis. I guess I know what he's probably looking at for five hundred bucks. He's looking at the one that you see on um, City of Fredericton that they stick in, like they get a plate in there and then these ones go on and they stick in there and they're hard. They're not ones you just have to tie down all the time. So the ones you, have, that, the ones you have are tied down so you can take them home with you. Yeah. Yeah. Because because for you gotta be able to move them for your your ages, so your new 11 and, and stuff, like you, they have different, different lengths, so, you know, the you new 11 is probably, yeah, yeah the, runs, exactly. the runs are different sizes. Yeah, and then baseball is different than softball and, yeah. and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. That's what we can check off of this. Yeah, there you go. So the next one, the Playground Land Heritage Building, um, this one is where the other night we had increased from the 20 to the 75. Once again, as a municipality, we really need to start buying land. Like, mm -hmm. so many municipalities have land because you just never know when we're going to need something somewhere or we can sell it for another piece of property or whatever so a good example um we were all of us caos were circulating um emails talking about the um request for housing incentive remember we applied mm -hmm. for the grants for affordable housing anyway the question was asked if there was any incentives that municipalities do um, for their developers so, Michelle from the Municipality of Grand Lake, which is Minto Chipman, um, she is actually talking about the Chipman part of it, which is not as large as we are. Anyway, she said, the Municipality of Grand Lake partners with land developers to live land opportunities that the village owns. I personally have been a part of major housing development in our area for the past five years. We have given three parcels of land for one dollar and most recently our council has given a land developer property for one dollar with covenants to develop a hundred homes. Oh I know, we need to be doing yeah. stuff like right? that. Right, so if small places like Minto, Chipman, St. George, St. Andrews, McAdam, did it. Absolutely. It's one thing that we really need mm -hmm. to start doing. And I cannot stress how important it is that we continue to budget for. Well, we've been trying a couple land. of us, we've been trying to do it for years, but there's been resistance to it. Exactly. There was even a plot of land that I had laid out with a graphic to show all the things we could put on it. And then it turned into, well, we have to have it assessed. 
and then we want to have it reviewed for something. And then it was somebody else wanted something else. So it was like, if you don't buy it right now, it was a steal at the time. It's seventy five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. It sold for a hundred. It sold again for eight hundred thousand. Like it's you can't. You it has to be less resistance and willing to move forward with things. Yeah. With like that, or we're going to lose opportunities again. Well, there was also that one the team drive or uh, yeah. off yeah. on or something like that that Crown Land that we could have got for next to nothing. And I fought and argued, fought and argued about that for years. But and again, I would think bother. unless we set priorities, unless we have a vision, unless we can, we do. We're not all on the same page. No, the only not. way we're all going to get on the same page is if we have some sort of vision as to what we want for the community. And this is where we had to do a catch-22 problem, that we can't have a vision until we have the land to put things onto. And this is, like, you, you, you have to do both at the same time. Well, the you opportunities yeah. for land don't come up at the same time as the opportunity when, when you want to build something. If you decide you want to build whatever, yeah. you're not necessarily going to find the land at the price yeah. that you want. This is why we need to buy land. I mean, we need to buy land in advance. Even if we don't have a plan to put on it, because at some point, maybe not this council, maybe 15 or 20 years from now council, we'll need land for something. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have it, we, they can't do anything with it. Yeah. That's right. That's the problem. Yeah, and you never know, like, have the property because you never know if you're going to need water. We're going to have to do test holes for wells or whatever, right? Like. There's tons of things that we might need to do. There's, mm -hmm. you know, but Chipman, for example, has a housing issue. They have a housing problem, right? We have a housing, oh, yeah, we have right. a housing so problem. We have, yeah. a housing <laughs> problem. <laughs> we have a major housing problem. They yeah. weren't um, able, people weren't able to find any type of housing. Is my understanding. People would go there to work and weren't, there wasn't any mean apartments or there wasn't any whatever, right? We're not, I don't feel we're in the same situation. People like in Hanwell have their own homes. And then when they want to. So they do. And then when they want to downgrade or they want to have something smaller or whatever, <coughs> our seniors and stuff have to leave the community <coughs> that they have lived in their whole entire life. Like, yeah. They're, not just, they're not just leaving because they want to downsize, they're leaving because they want to be closer to amenities and they're getting older, they don't want the car, they want to use a bus service, things like that. So it's not just downsizing from their house, they want to change the lifestyle. It's not I know several people. Too. But, it's youth. But yeah, see like there again, this is, we need a plan. Are we talking seniors' housing? Mm -hmm. Are we talking affordable housing? Are we talking... And if we, we don't have the land to put it on, that's None right. of that matters. Exactly. <clears throat> That's the problem. We don't have. If you don't have land, you can't have a vision. You have to have the land first. Oh. Okay. I will disagree with that, but that's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, have, we will have to have that another time. <laughs> yeah, we, have, we have to have incentives too, because I know people who have land, and right now it's not a secret that it, it's it's expensive to, to build, and we do need to start working with some of our contractors on land that they have. With other incentives too, that's right. as well as as having land that's available. That's right. I think the market will look after incentives no, it won't. for for it housing won't. and whatnot. Mm. I it mean, you're talking, of, you know, you're talking millions of dollars, and the, our community yeah. can't afford the tax dollars to subsidize mm -hmm. developers to building, you know, any type of housing. I know. That's why we. You know, that's why you got the federal government involved and the provincial government involved. Yeah. So it's not for small municipalities that start tying up millions of our taxpayers. No, we're not talking millions. Don't even mean millions. No. Like you know, take. Seventy thousand or a hundred thousand this year, and maybe well, well there's also other hundred thousand next year. There's like, also other incentives, <coughs> building, you know, uh, waiving building permits, doing there. There's there's more than one way to go about it. Anyway, so, I, think I think it's time for another I'm, discussion. I'm, I'm new to council, and we do an awesome job. Or you guys have done an awesome job as far as developing recreational uh, facilities, activities, and everything else for the community. But perhaps tomorrow when we sit down five year plan, we have to ensure okay, how are we going to increase our tax base? Residential development is is one means by which we can do that. Yeah. And um, it needs an awful lot of foresight. 
It needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of planning. And I uh, agree with Darren. Land acquisition should be paramount, but you have to be cautious as to where you acquire the land as well. Have we ever done a study as to who owns the particular lots around the municipality? Yes, we have. More than once. <laughs> More than once. Is, or do we still have those? Somewhat. Are there, are we, there, we've done no. hand -wand. We have right, never yes, looked at yeah. Ottawa and Kingsclear. Well, King's clear well actually, uh, Councillor Crowes has, has been looking. Has, has, we, we have had discussions. And it but, wouldn't have been an extensive study no. that was done. Yeah, we just kind of looked at kids and yeah, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But this is what I'm saying. Like, we really need to start thinking of that future. Like... Because when we apply for this funding through the affordable housing, um, we have a chance to get over a million dollars from this funding. So with that, we've got to think of how we're going to increase our growth. Because, and like you said, it's going to be through residential. Because all it's going to take is for something to happen and city of Fredericton will say, tells the industrial park, oh, we're going to cut your tax rate by, I mean, it probably won't happen, but something could happen to our industrial park. Then we have lost a very big part of our tax base kind of thing. So, $100 million. I mean, we've, we've got the potential. We have so much vacant land and now that we are this huge entity, we really need to start utilizing that. So my suggestion was just that we really start to think about putting money aside for oh, like I agree. We have the social responsibility to provide affordable housing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't forget, councils are not developers. I mean, we can We're foster not. growth by, you know, by our rural plan, by our zoning plans and things like that. And we're doing that, we're changing that too to make it. Yeah. But we're not we're not in the process of going out and you know and, well, and yes building we, houses and yes stuff. We, not going yes to we are. No. Okay. <laughs> Here's here just you just mentioned I mean, the potential for, we got a federal government grant for over a million dollars. And we are just talked about budgeting for land acquisition purchases and there was another mention of what we could do to give incentives for developers to build housing and have subdivisions created for people. Why can't we take part of the million dollars to buy land to give it to developers if they, under the condition that they build low cost housing? That's exactly what like we need to a, do with it. That is a perfect idea of how you can utilize that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's easy. Anyway, we're not going to, we're going to be here all night. Well, this, this is the way off to where anyway. we should be talking about tonight. I don't think it is. It's part of the budget, right? That's part of getting the grant for that will be part of our budget that we could forecast in the next year how we move forward with land acquisition. But again, building all these subdivisions that you're talking about or getting all these subdivisions that we're talking about, water study. We need to make sure that we are good. And we're not. When they I've heard many stories. I know Tony Derling says he's got lots of water. That's in the industrial park. Yeah. Exactly. But I also know other people that had to drill their wells deeper. They're not worth... I know a lady just up for me. This is her second one that she's done because the water's not there. Or they're not getting the proper pressure. Or whatever. We can't just take those things lightly for granted, and yeah. keep building. No, but when we're... When we you still need a plan. When you... When the developer comes and is developing the land, they are required to do a water survey, a water study. They do... That's they true. don't do... They do an abbreviated water on, study. They don't do a full uh, water that's study. that's the trick, though. So they're depends, doing more than eight plots. Yeah, they it depends on the size. Study yeah, and, and it depends the on the size. And, I mean, you know, if we were to... You know, we could, we could always do it ourselves. But, I mean, there are, it, it isn't that they just go in willy-nilly with it and not do a water study. They, they do. And like I say, it depends on the size of the development. It depends on, you know, if you're going to build a, one, you know, a house on an acre. No, they don't. But no, but if it's a 20-acre plot being subdivided, absolutely yeah. we have absolutely a water study do. on that plot. Yes, they do. But if it was just a six-room townhouse, they wouldn't have to. But that, that's where we would contract to say, in order for you to get the grant or for us to get right. it for free, 
you need to build a full subdivision. Right? That's where stuff like that comes yeah, into play. Yeah, that's where your incentives come from. That's where your incentives to build stuff. See, Ari, I'm not, we're not going to agree on this tonight, so uh, I really think we need to move that's okay. why we're nothing not, we're not, we're not gonna, that But that's why nothing we're, that's right. we're not. We're never ever going to agree, period. We're never going to agree on that. We've been fighting for this for years, so. Well, that's all right. We agree on some things, we disagree on others. Okay, okay. so do you want me okay. to cut this? No. No. <laughs> I want you to cut more in it. What Anybody, point? anything so, from the yay side? Playground land and heritage, we put it from 20 to 75. Do you want me to cut this? No. So no. 75,000, 25,000 for playground, 25,000 for land, 25,000 for heritage building, or is it just all lumped into one no, thing? it's like whatever we end up doing, but I... Do we have even any? under fiscal, I have land under fiscal. Mm -hmm. Am I making the presumption that the heritage building is the church? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think we should double that number, quite frankly. And then if we have to come back to it later, then we, we can. Well, and like I said, um, under fiscal, under our capital, right. I also have... Um, oh, you do under fiscal. Okay. Okay. I, okay. I have land as well, but um, if... If that is something that you guys just okay. do not want, then we might as well just put it back to no, no, no. Okay. Um, I have a question though. Do we have any idea? I've asked before somebody at service commission. Do we have any idea when we're going to hear about that grant? Because it's been a while since we applied for it. Sorry for what grant? It went through the regional service commission that one point whatever million that we applied for way back in the summer. I don't because I mean, it was the whole one. province that applied. Yeah, I know the whole plant. Yeah, I know yeah. it's a big, it's a big process. Okay, I was just curious. Okay, um, I'm not getting into. So the next one, <laughs> excuse me, was the splash pad for um, David Bell. But I think that this is something else. I'm just going to move over to gas tax, and that mm -hmm. is something that we will. Talk about in our five year capital. Yeah, you'll need to double that number too, actually, in, in capital. Because you're not going to get a very big pad for $300,000. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, when I got the um, quotes for the one that St. George put in, I right. think it was like 310 But that is on municipal water, isn't it? We need recyclable water. St. George is municipal water. Yeah, so then the next page, Taylor said two outdoor soccer goals in Redding. Is interested in tending to the soccer fields in 2024, and that's like 7,500. I really, I really wouldn't bother that. That, part, that and soccer field has never been used for a soccer field in the 25 years it's been there. And <laughs> right now, a little bit of work. Soccer. Okay. That's what the I, would, I would mix that and, and then if, a, if for some reason the, the urge there from a survey to use it, then I guess we could really encourage the uh, new pitch in Hamwell and join <laughs> the clubs there, you know what I mean, like just to kind of promote it all the way around. Okay. So. Should, shouldn't we focus on trying to get the a, per, a more permanent rink built there with proper wall boards yeah. and stuff? Right. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> and real ice with a heating okay. or a cooling plant? Yeah, that doesn't melt into February. In January. January. I just I just sent something around there. Yeah, I haven't had time to look at that yet. About the same thing about the uh, refrigerated ice. That is um, for like events. Yeah. So I had to bring, I had to bring my, he bore two of mine for the summer. So like for the mm -hmm. spook fest, just kind of like, like 10 by 10 shelter that you can, if you want to have like the, the, the face painting, let's like sit under it instead of them having to bring Susan their own. Has one. Yeah, I've got we one. Yeah. One. It'd be nice to have some just here oh, okay. for here. Yeah. It would also be yeah, nice to have the logo. Or logos. Logo yeah. Yes, yeah. You definitely want the logos on Yeah. There. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that was those ones. Um, Here, can we back up to this? The general budget sure. for the first yep. um, So we're back to the general budget, the very first sheet that we okay. right. talked about. Yeah. So, uh, <coughs> as you know, we're putting the final touches on the uh, emergency plan for the community. 
and it's come to light that uh, we're getting our shelters um, identified and clarified. It, it's come to light that um, we, we need something in the, in the Island View or Kings Clear area, and uh, we were talking to some uh, facilities about that, but we might have to buy a generator for them. So, okay. Uh, but I think we can get a grant for that. We probably can. So, we get a grant for the one at Yoho through the yeah, we did. Community Investment Fund. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we had a presentation from RDC at yeah, yeah. that yeah. last thing, and they Same said one. you can actually get a grant yeah. if you can identify a facility yeah. that's suitable. So, yeah. I'm not sure we need to show that there. Um, like a warming center charging kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, it's a warming mm -hmm. charging center. So this is going to be probably for the island view. Well, in that area. In the, yeah, because yeah, we can't use area. the building. Yeah. So it'll be station three. Well, we, we can't use station three. Well, no. oh yeah, no. island view. But you could probably keep a generator there and haul it out if you need. Uh, well, the generator no. that's at station three is permanent. Yeah, but we could, no, but we like could put that in our storage unit. Yeah, there. So if we uh, put it somewhere. On the trailer or whatever. And okay. on, if we didn't have, like, you and I had talked about possible restaurant or something, then that we might not be able to, but... Yeah, no, I don't think we're going to go there. But uh, there's some other facilities that we might be able to work with. And right. That, uh, they might need a generator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to make sure it has the right the pro on site, I suppose. Sorry, right, Darren. No, it's okay. I was just gonna say, and then you could keep it on site, I guess, if you found a place. Yeah, right? yeah. And yeah, we need proper transfer switch and proper amperage too, yeah. whether it's four hundred yeah. amp or three phase or whatever. For example, the one we have at Yoho, we we have the switch put in, but the the generator itself stays up here. Yeah. And yeah. you just take it yeah. over when you need it. Yeah. So if you you know, depending on where you're where you're what facility you think you're using, that's probably a good way to do it. You can keep it up at station three or over here or yeah. over through. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it yeah. 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 <coughs> okay. So then, um, just under the fiscal, I once again I had just put in that we should talk about land. But another thing, I really <laughs> think that we need to talk about the heating system in here and have the heating system redone <coughs> here. The heating system that we have, we've had issues with it ever since we um, moved in. You don't have a page on that. No. I, it was just something that uh, meant to know. Um, it's, it's been terrible. Anyway, we just had repairs done to it here not too long ago. And he said, like, they're not even using um, this equipment anymore. Already? <laughs> kind of thing. Wow. Is that the but geothermal on this side? It's the, yeah. 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 So it's cold in here most of the time. We constantly it it changes all by itself. Like it does. <laughs> last night I turned on the heat even mm -hmm. for that for the community side. Mm -hmm. It came on instantly. We had a rental today, so we thought, okay, it's going to come on instantly. Uh, no, we found out when it didn't turn on and we tried everything that there's a 20 minute delay from the time we turn it on until the, it actually comes on. And I'm like, how did that change from last night to mm -hmm. today? Like, there's just no rhyme and reason. The clock delayed. He said the clock delayed or something. So there was like a, a malfunction and it delayed. So then we had, we couldn't turn it on at all. Outage. And it was just frustrating. No, that was before the power. Oh, it was before, and then the power is happened yeah. shortly right after yeah. that. But so that was for that I, part, pardon me. But that was for the. Well, it's all connected under the same. Well, I didn't think about it. I thought the two were separate. That one was a heat pump, and the other one was. They are, the but electrical wise, it's kind oh, of all okay. into the same panel thing. So it's all the same. It's, it's it's the same company okay. and the same programming. Yeah, like runs it. My okay. website yeah. that I go right. on yeah. to change yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one tab is the floor plan and the other tab is the equipment upstairs okay. kind of thing. Right. But it's, and it's, all the heaters have to be all on hot 
My or office, all on cold. Yeah, my office is the coldest. Like, like I get the heat last. Like we can get so that if I I want it to be 19 degrees in my office and Sherry wants it to be 45 in her <laughs> office. The individual. We can't have that. It all has to be all the same. If there's one that is a little bit different, then the cooling comes on. So it's like. So it, is there a green energy grant out there that we can upgrade this stuff? I hope so. Because like, I really think that we need to, well, and I don't even know how much money that say, we're actually this, looking has at. Has anybody told you what the solution is to upgrade it? Um, no. We, we've talked to the companies many times and have said that we've been frustrated, but mm -hmm. nobody seems to oh, have sure. a solution. Okay. You can be, I don't know how, it, uh, you know, basically a brand new building, the equipment can be obsolete already. I it's know, it's only, like, geothermal it's only like five years old or something. Like, have you been here five years? I'm not even sure. No, well, 2018. 2019. It was 2019. It was four years. But like to go with heat pumps here, you'd have to have basically one in every room because there, none of them are really directly connected. You had doors to them all the time. And you couldn't have anything bigger than like a 9,000 BTU in that room or recycling constantly. Right? You'd, it might be able to get 12 in here, but like the Oh, but I mean, that's that ridiculous. Like, I don't think that 15 little heat, heat pumps. pumps. No. So if you do go with heat pumps, there is a grant for that. It's a green yeah. Canada grant. But is it residential? Is it low income? Or is it no, there's, uh, there's a section of that allocated for commercial too. I don't know how much of it's gone though, that's the problem. A lot of that right. was yeah. used up right away, right? Anyway, and I mean the air coming through the way it does, that's not a bad thing if we can be able to regulate it better. Like, well, there must well, be what did they say? It's, it's a, like a, a one... It's like a closed loop. One directional. Closed loop. Yeah. A closed loop. Or but there must be some, there must be an electrician somewhere that knows how to, I mean there has to be buildings, there has to be geothermal buildings that... Yeah, it wouldn't be an electrician, it would be, uh, you know, heat and, heating and ventilation. Yeah, like yeah. Well, that's that. who we have, like we've... But obviously they're not... They're obviously not the right one. Have a look at that system, because <laughs> we're not having any luck out of those guys. They don't seem to know what they're doing. How they, they can they say they're not even using this anymore when it's only three years old? I mean, that doesn't, you know, we got a geothermal system that's supposedly top of the line and very modern. It can't not be able to date already, can't it? It's going be crazy. Sense. Yeah, yeah there has I'm only be. telling you what mm -hmm. the company yeah. told me, no. so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should look. That's all I can do. We can Google another consultant or something. Yeah, well, that. we have. We, because we always went with the company that we mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. Then they are no longer servicing part of our stuff or whatever. Okay. So we have been going with this new person mm -hmm. and he was involved in putting it up and he at the time he mm -hmm. said that he didn't really agree with the way this was kind of done mm -hmm. so I mean if you've got two different companies that are telling us the same thing so what is their suggestion that you just throw it that's away what I'm saying so I don't have a suggestion I'm just saying okay well, let's something look in, that we'll look into we need to start. Possibly look into. I think it's going to. Be that sounds like a daring job to me. Expensive. I could look into something like that. Yeah. Like yeah whatever. But it's something that if we don't do it this year, I think it's something that we really need to look at. Well, you can't be uncomfortable and like you know, too hot in the summer and too cold in the winter. I mean, it doesn't make sense. So we got to do something. Well, we don't. We have. I'm cold. I'm cold. I use my I use my space heater, 365 days a year. Yeah. Well, see, if it's on a closed loop, so you could move it. It'd be a waste, an absolute waste of money to do it. But you could basically just gut everything that's connected to the geothermal and put in forced hot air. Okay, and, and basically it turns into basically a, a big HVAC. What it would be? It'd be like a twenty-ton HVAC or something to do an area this size. And uh, like that would work, but it would just be. An, it seems like an absurd waste of money to throw yeah. all that money into the geothermal yeah. and, and then just throw it, it away yeah. and replace it with. You can't. I mean, there's, there's literally, you know, probably I don't know. Half a million dollars, two quarters of a million dollars set up but the it's, heating system. It's funny because the ge geothermal works great in the washrooms because that's geothermal. Works fantastic in the washrooms. Works fantastic in the lobby. Never an issue. The kitchen even. All those areas are very comfortable all the time. Yeah. For some reason, this half of the building, not com like I'm frozen right now. Not comfortable. See, I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm just Sweet, nice. baby. I'm tired actually, but I'm hot. <laughs> yeah. But so, anyway, it's weird. It's, it's weird. So there's, there's, you can get things like boosters. So what? 
I'm just, it's just not a problem. Yeah, like, that, like, that, like, like it's talking about it after the meetings over. Yeah, yeah. There's ways you can fix that without yeah. having to. There's got to be a way to you know, tweak this thing that'll work. There something is. must melt something. There's four stairs. There's things you can do to fix that. <coughs> it's it's not, a, not a thing to talk about. No, okay. I'm budget. just yeah. bringing it forward that I think that we really need to do something with the yeah. heating system. Got to get something to look at. So. In here, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So All what's right. next? Um, nothing. That was, that was it. Uh, There's a page sorry. here from... From Dan. Oh, um, sorry. From Dan, and once again he was just throwing out ideas. So snowmobile drag, got that box and bed liner. We'll do that. Mm -hmm. um, the gator, the mule, whatever. We'll talk about that at the meeting. Um, Councillor Cross did um, research on that. Sea can. I don't know if that is something that you guys want to for us to research. I don't even know where you buy sea cans, but... Buy them at St. Oh, John. Yeah, there's a place, I saw, just happened to see a place over the north side today, but I was looking for something else. Yeah. Sorry, no. Councillor like Cross, I didn't hear what you said. It's down in Majorville, the only place that has them. Oh, okay. It's Kevin Curry. And they're one way, so they come here, and then they go get them and ship them down here. He sells them, they're about $7,000. Ooh, yeah, the one we bought, we got used for 3000 yeah. the one we have yeah. right now. Yeah. Like I said, these ones are basically, they were used one way, they still smell, they still smell the floor, <laughs> on the floor. Like what the, like the, what the wood's made of, so that you get the floor and stuff in. Yeah. Because I bought one, I bought one last year for the community park, so. Oh, right, because you said that we'd probably be able to use that one, correct? Yeah, we could probably use it until... We get our storage figured out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't have to do don't this. Then. We don't need that. Okay. Not for seven thousand dollars, no. Okay, so then um, he was saying the post hole digger, the bush hog, and the wood chipper for the tractor. Are any of those items things that you guys want to consider? Well, I, I think the wood chipper, because yeah. we got rid of the old mm -hmm. one. I think we need to yeah. get I one. Did we get, didn't get rid of it, yeah. But we're in the process of not using We're not. We haven't used it, so right. we need something we can use. But we need something that they what's, feel good about using but and it's safer. What's the capacity on a wood chipper for a tractor? Is it something you'd have to research? Yeah, I've got no idea. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm wondering. I don't know that they're big enough. Well, I don't know if they would. They would probably only cover for that tractor and only be probably six inches at best. Oh, I'd be surprised if you got that out of it. Well, isn't that what we have? <laughs> no, I think the other one's like four inch. Well, I shouldn't say I never used this one. The one we used before, I thought was only, you know. Well, again, it's something we have to research. Yeah, you have to look we into don't, We, we don't do need a wood chipper for sure. Okay, so that's something you want us to look into? Yes. Oh, yes, we yeah. definitely, definitely need a wood chipper. Definitely need a wood chipper. Okay. So then he's saying another commercial zero turn mower. Well, you know. He's not wrong. No, he's not. There's so many more There's parcels of land that yeah. we're going to need it for. Yeah, he's, yeah. Not, he's not wrong on that. Not wrong, no. Okay, so that's another thing. So, summer students, um, do you want summer students to do the mowing, or are we going to contract it like we did this summer? Well, if you buy a mower, then if you get students. Well, and that's it. what I mean. Like, are you, you a, a cost <laughs> analysis? Like what's what works okay. better, I would say. Well, if you're hiring somebody to do grass, some we had some prices on some that is absolutely ridiculous. And if we it, well, yeah. if and if we're going to do grass, we need to do that ASAP because last year we waited. And we we waited, waited and we had a very difficult time finding anyone to do it, which yeah. is why yeah. we ended up doing Station One and the park with mm -hmm. limited equipment. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. rough. Yeah. So. I think we should get get another mower because I mean the other one's gonna break from time to time. I mean, then we've got all like you say all these extra parts. You've got three or four parts already. Probably won't have grass at Yoho this year, but you'll another year. Eventually, will though. Yeah. Another year you will. Yeah. So who's going to be moving it around to the other parks? I was thinking on the students, way in. Students. Yeah. The students. So they'll have access students to the and truck mm -hmm. and the trailer. Yeah, they, they, they do this year. They did this okay. year. Well, you can always you can always rent a truck too. 
mean, you can rent a truck for the summer. Well, we have a, we have a truck. We have a, we have I know, a but if you now that we're getting bigger, you need to go more places at one time. You can always, rather than buying another truck right now, you can always rent a truck for three or four months in the summer yeah. if you need to. They were expensive, weren't they, when we no. talked about them before, about renting? I thought that they were fair. Yeah, it's not to, it was, to no. me, there was, it was cost prohibitive for some reason when we talked mm -hmm. about renting it just for six months. Yeah, but it would be very costly. It was. Uh, I don't know why, but I, that's my I check recollection, it yeah. recollection, but, but I don't double check even, on it. To rent even like a Toyota Corolla right now is $1,000 a week. I couldn't imagine what it would cost to rent for a half truck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was there any issues this year in trucking the uh, mowers around to the no, sites? No, they had no yeah. issues at all. So. I wasn't here most of the yeah. summer. Oh. They had no issues at all. They were fine. So there you go. The only, the only issue there is if you get more summer students and you do take on, then we do take on more mowing, you're going to have to have a way to get them around. Yeah. Especially if you take if you take two mowers and a couple of whippersnappers out to to Station 1 and uh, David Bell and do that. If you take three of them or four, if you want four of them out there, then you're looking at running them around somewhere. Somebody, somebody's going to be hauled somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's why Dan has their extended cab, well, basically a quad cab truck. Yeah, that's what we should have bought to begin with, but anyway. Yeah. But we brought that? two, we, with the new trailer, we bought both mowers out to David Bell this year and mowed out there with, with two mowers at the same time. Oh, we already have two mowers. Oh, yeah, the old have, one. We have the oh, older one. Yeah. yeah. I see where you're going. But it wouldn't hurt to upgrade, like I said, to have two really, the other one is much slower than the new commercial one. And I don't think it's commercial anyway than the old one. No, it's not. It's not. No. It's not a commercial mower. Oh, field. oh, okay. So it probably wouldn't hurt to have, you know, commercial equipment. The other mm -hmm. one is is much lower. I didn't realize it took that long through the infield at David Bell Park with the old mower. It yeah. took a while. Well, yeah. yes, that's what I was hearing was it was taking yeah. hours to yeah. do well, it's something. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, exactly. You know, yes. another commercial mower certainly wouldn't hurt, wouldn't hurt to have. Right. Yeah. So. so, yes, then. We should budget for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if we need, uh, if we need to Even a self-propelled one, one or, one or two of them would work well, especially around Hamilton Place. So, you mean in addition to another commercial? Well, self propelled is just your walk behind. Just a walk yeah. behind mower, you know, like you 20. Like yeah, yeah like, like everybody has at home, basically. Small. Yeah. Yeah. But self propelled. Yeah, you can get like. But you can get a commercial one of those too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can get them uh, rechargeable batteries now too, like 80 volt. So you wouldn't even uh, just charge batteries up But one of cool. those would take forever to do around here. Here. No, but there's no, still places where you can't get the zero. Oh, I see. Right. Just the, like, the little areas. Little areas, little areas, right. little areas okay. where you can't get the big machine. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. And yeah. some of the slopes and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm not going to get into um, clothes because there's already a budget for that. I'm not sure why that's there. This um, The sink in the garage area. Don't we have one? No. Um, ours is in the utility. Oh, or whatever. Oh, I thought they put one there. We no, had talked no. about it um, before because we kind of had thought that maybe at the same time that we were putting in the water fountain, because we thought that that water fountain was going to go over yeah. here and that we could do the plumbing, the same plumbing spot, at yeah. the same time, but we ended up putting it on the other side of the building or whatever. So um, that might be something uh, Dan has talked about that many times when he's coming into the garage or needs to clean something, it's so much easier just to clean it there than to come clear up to the women's washroom. Well, I agree. And that's, that's another thing as well, like the <coughs> janitor's closet is in the women's washroom. We're not quite sure why. <laughs> anyway, um, so even janitor-wise, it would probably be more... But in the new storage... Garage? Would we put one in there? No, we weren't going to run We're water. We're not putting water too expensive. Water. Water. Okay. So much more but I do agree with Dan because having the summer students traipse through the building with paint thinner mm -hmm. and paint brushes, yeah. and they're in the back, and then, then that sink is like this high off the ground, and they're bent over, and they're, it just it doesn't make any yeah. sense. It's not oh, the one in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not. It's not floor. I think it's more. That's more realistically. That that's just a mop sink. Oh, that's what that is. It's not for them to be having the water too was easy. The drain is a lot more difficult. Mm. Yeah. 
So that's that's problematic. So we could <coughs> excuse me. Um, we could sure, get yeah. uh, the plumbers to give us an idea of what the cost yeah. would be for that. I don't know where they drain a sink out back there. Where are you going to drain the water to? You can't drain it out to the septic system in the front where normally you drain to. You you have to tunnel under the floor. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. that's an issue. If you yeah, put something back there, you need some place to drain the water to. So you have to put in a, a dry well or something to be able to drain. Oh, we have. Gray I water. believe those are illegal in New Brunswick. Sorry, dear. Yeah. A dry well for gray water. <laughs> yes, they are. They are. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we can, we'll talk to we plumber. Discuss that. Yeah, plumber will hopefully. Know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Did, just a quick question: Did they bring the uh, water fountain in yet? It doesn't come in. You just have to winterize it. it. He had to. Unhook and then need to blow the lines out. Yeah, has that been done yet? Uh, it's supposed to be. That's something to follow up on, or we'll have a four thousand gallon water yeah. fountain. Yeah. Just a piece of junk. Yeah. I haven't figured out that water fountain yet. The dog part? Well, no, the dog part. There's no dish, so that when you yeah, no, because I, I, I turned it on one day and Jack was there and he looked at me. The water came like this one down. Then he looked at me like. Oh, there's a dish in the back. <laughs> I didn't see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's there's. A, He's like, so what's the I'm sky jack that. lift for? What does he want that for? Oh, what is it? It's a well, thing to go up and paint the, the top of the building. Yeah. 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 Well, okay, so... The it's on four yeah. wheels usually in a scissor version. All right, um, no. I'm going to say no. Um, we rent that once every two years okay. or whatever for $500. So. You to, we wouldn't have anyone to put it. No. no. And, then you, and then you get a trainer. Yeah, no. Yeah. No. no. Um, then he said second tractor to haul the trailer and the second truck. Well, I, I, don't could, think I, I would agree with the second truck, but not the, the truck. Yeah. Eventually we are going to need a second truck. We are. Yeah. Right now I don't right, think. Right, that's why I suggest we rent one the summer. I think we've got enough on our five-year plan. <laughs> yeah. On our budget. Yeah. No, yeah, no, I don't agree with, but that's why I was suggesting just, you know, if we need one, rent one in the summer for eight weeks or six weeks or whatever you need it for. If we ordered one now, we might get one to park in the lots or no, another time I another trucks. time I wouldn't order one. Yeah. Whatever. So. But I wouldn't yeah. order again another time. We made a mistake, I believe, last time we should have bought a, the end of the year off the lot. Off the lot. Yep, definitely. Yeah. yeah. We we made a mistake on that last well, we ordered time. But I think it's them. because there wasn't any. Well there, there was, but there Somebody decided they wanted an eight. Yeah, somebody wanted a green one with an eight-foot box. Well, I mean, we could buy a red one with a six-foot box and be mm -hmm. just as happy. Yeah. And be able to take our students somewhere. Or something. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so that's all that I have. I over the next five days, I will compile all these numbers into our budget. Um, local government has put out a new budget portal. We've had a little bit of training on it, but I have not yet put one number into this new electronic um, portal. So supposedly all of our numbers and stuff that we used to get from local government are already populated in there, and then we just plug away. So I'm hoping it's just as easy as a plug. So. Yeah, because Moncton already got their tax rate back, so that they've already done it. Yeah, um, I know a lot of municipalities said that they will not be um, submitting theirs on the 15th right. or whatever. Um, they're waiting for all their costs and from Capital Regional Service Commission to come back and actually say what our numbers are instead of estimating them. Yeah. Yeah, right now they're they're going to have another meeting with the Finance Committee, RSC 11. Or Regional Capital, Capital, Capital Regional Capital. Service Commission, and then they're going to have another special meeting to see if they can get this budget resolved. Okay. So that's the plan anyway, so that's within probably the next week to 10 days. Yeah. I think we'll try to be as close as we can to um, the 15th or whatever. It's all according how many times I might have to come <laughs> back when we have to tweak numbers or something. If something happened, um, would you guys be interested in doing a Saturday instead of an evening meeting or a Sunday? I don't have a Saturday available right now in, in Christmas. Okay. What about a Sunday? Maybe. Maybe. So Sunday's a maybe. Yeah. So Is everybody willing to come in on a Sunday morning or afternoon or evening? Date, I guess, but yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll certainly try to do, um, we just have, seem to have a fair amount of 
stuff going on and then you're into Christmas parties as well so um, even Saturdays and Sundays might not even um, be available but I just thought I would Can ask. I ask a quick yeah. question? Sure. Yeah. Site plan, did they approve it? Oh, we haven't heard back. They said that um, they changed us from non-conforming to conforming or whatever because we did the blazing and all that stuff and I that's all I heard. We are now conforming. <laughs> so when will we know? Okay, so yeah, so you wouldn't know. So the, the Handle Recreation Park is on leased land, right? So if we want changes to something out there, like if we want to add, then we have to submit a site plan and it needs to be approved by Crown Land. Okay. So, so we just um, we just submitted. Did. Yeah. We had added um, a bunch of stuff we put, uh, wells, septic, the church, all down um, Nature Park Drive. We put in um, that we would put in another 40 parking spots so they would be like looking over to the school, like going down the side of the, the road because we don't have enough parking um, spaces here. The road. Um, the access oh, road. the access to get road. to. We had some damage to the multi-purpose, the, the, the trail. accessibility trail. Yeah. So we, we want to build a road going up the side. Bypass that. So if we have to get heavy equipment in, if any time, <coughs> it won't wreck our multi-purpose or yeah. our rubberized surface. Yeah. Right. But yeah. so once we have an idea of that it's approved, then we can budget for some of that, right? Some of it, like it's capital. Like, would some of it go through the gas <coughs> tax fund? Well, anything to do with the recreation building, so your church thing. But the that's sewer in that won't, right? That won't be covered under... I don't know, because they plan, they approved the... The project was the church, mm. or the recreation like, building. I don't know if that would fall under there. It should or not. because it's to me you can't would. have a recreation building without a <coughs> yeah. septic. Well, a septic be part of the building. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's never been asked before, right? Well, we had so I don't know. Uh -huh. I was just I'm just yeah. curious because I'm just in terms of figuring out for the gap for the five year capital plan tomorrow. I was just trying to figure out if that's going to be part of it. Yeah. So the five year capital plan for tomorrow, I want to get an idea of these projects here, because we're going to be carrying over the 2019 to 2024. So I need to have an idea of what we're going to do kind of thing so that I can have an idea of what costs are going to be for that. Then in April, we'll do the new one that is 2024 to mm -hmm. 2029 or whatever. So. And is there any more word then about whether they're going to transfer that land to us? Still no word. Did you look at the I sent you? Or not? No, I didn't look at the page to see where it is, but it was 100 acres down towards yeah. Mountain. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, Susan come across a 100 acre parcel that possibly we could buy and trade. We'd have to ask. Yeah, but we'd have to ask and see. But we're still waiting on what's going to happen there. So, so when will they make a definitive, give us a definitive answer? <coughs> Is it over to be something? quite honest, I really think that Mayor, Council, myself, we should sit down and have a meeting with them. Mm -hmm. Because a few years ago when we had talked about this parcel of land or whatever, um, at the time, the former councillor, Chris Melvin, and I, and the clerk at the time, um, we all went, we did like a little presentation, or the mayor did, and we had a meeting with them, and then we were able to buy this right. piece. So I think that it's wonderful to say to local government, like, could you flag this for us? Or contact somebody that works in the office mm -hmm. at DNR to say this. I think that we need to go right to the top and have a meeting with the minister and say, what exactly, how can we get this property? Like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. will you trade with us if we can find 
another piece of crown land so that it's still even? Would you let us buy it? Would you give it to us for a dollar? <laughs> Well, but we do need a definitive but I, think it's, yeah. it's, I, think, I think it's a good idea to have a meeting. I think it's long in the tooth. I think, yeah. The next question would be why did we wait so long to do that? Well, because we did, so let's just, just move on. Yeah. <laughs> so long to do what? It's 9 o'clock. We'll have the, an actual sit down meeting with the minister mm -hmm. and just well, say, we were trying to wait to see what they were going to do. Yeah. With municipal so we reform, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We were hoping to include that with the transfer of the land coming from the former Kingsclare LS LSD. And so far, we've got no indication that they will or they won't. Yeah. So. I think we should talk to him. I never thought I could have talked to my son that, that long ago. Well, I, I think it calls for a meeting with the minister. Mm -hmm. So I think so too. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we had great rock when we had a meeting with the minister for DTI. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had we had a good year, and you can be sure that you know he got some stuff rolling for us. He did. Yeah. And I just found out the other day that the guy I was dealing with now has a new job. Yeah. That's a problem. We just get a good, you know, good association with some of these folks, and they move on. Turns over, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I forgot to have those relationships all over again. I must do that. That's what we do best. Yeah, yeah it'd be best to set up a meeting. You're right. Yeah, let's do it. Sounds good. Okay, so on Tuesday we are, we are adjourned. <laughs> adjourned at ten after nine.